Hey guys, this is Grant Coombs III, aka Ball Bomb, coming to you for another video from Cardrunners.com. In the first uh, part of this League Finder series, we worked on answering the question, when is winning a pot not enough? We talked about trying to extract as many possible big blinds, and particularly on turn and river decisions against a weaker range, trying to extract the most money possible. In this video, we're actually going to shift courses a little bit, and it's one of the more slow, action-filled leak finders that we're going to have. So instead of focusing on that, we're going to ask another question, which is, when things aren't going great for you at the tables, how can we find a way to at least break even, if not make a few big blinds here and there? This is a really key concept, because plenty of people can win a lot of money when they're running lucky, catching big hands, catching the right flops, etc., but what's really key is when things aren't going well for you, how do you adapt? And how can you how can you take ways of taking almost certain losing sessions and making them at least break even and waiting until you start hitting those big hands again? Let's jump right into the action here. I'm going to try to pause this as little as possible. And as you guys know from me, that's going to be rather difficult. Uh, but we're going to try to really just look at the session as a whole here. We end up opening Jack-8 off on table one. I think this is a little light and really not a big fan of it. Now, he might, have a, he might have a read that this player just gives up exceptionally easy in the big blind, but in general, I think opening a 2.5x is going to be a little too weak, and I'd much prefer to see him, one, tighten up his range in this situation, and two, that I would like to see him um, open to a larger size, at least 3x, I think, because in position, he's just going to own him too often here. We end up opening 4-5 suited uh, to a min race, which is totally fine, and then... From there, we opt to see bet. Really good board for us to see bet, and there's going to be a lot of cards that we continue with here, so definitely like to see bet in this situation. On table three, we see we're faced with a with a three bet here. Going to be a really easy four bet for us. Definitely a spot where we want to get the money in. The ace, I think, is probably going to be a pretty good barreling card for us as well. The only issue becomes that the table on the opponent on table four is going to be one of the weaker players that we're playing against. And therefore, he's going to be floating with ace highs far more often than most players in this scenario. And therefore, against most players, when I see the ace high, it's going to be a, tr a spot that I like to triple barrel quite a bit. But against this player in particular, I think I'm probably going to be betting two and then giving up, particularly on this river. He actually donks into us, which sort of makes me... And he didn't donk for a huge amount. And it sort of makes me want to bet a little bit here. But I think this is going to be 6x more often than not so it's a spot where we just need to be giving up on table three we end up getting the money in with aces and a really terrible spot but really nothing we can do there if you pick up ace king 100 big blinds deep button versus big blind definitely should be getting that hand in and the way the games are currently like neil's playing at 200 nl definitely want to be widening that value range i would even get hands in such as tens nines ace queen a decent amount if the if the if we're playing against an aggressive regular in that spot. I would say with the current makeup of the games that regulars are probably three betting on average some, somewhere around 12, 13%. And if you look up really how wide that is, it's exceptionally wide and you really want to get into a good four bet dynamic with the players. We end up isol isolating, I believe on table three here with queen eight offsuit, definitely a fine spot to, to take against a rather weak, weak opponent. Checking back is a fine option. Uh, I, I lean slightly more towards betting here, trying to get value from 6x for two streets, but certainly there's no problem there with uh, with checking it back and hoping that he can steal from us. Definitely another spot also where we talked about getting how do we maximize value there and what's a spot where we can get the most value. I think because we're he's expected to be calling flops quite a bit, that betting flop betting the flop is going to be more profitable than checking back. But certainly marginal. It's not it's definitely not clear cut. Not really shocked here that the big blind defends are opening are opening here. Definitely a spot where I'm going to take at least a shot here with the C bet. And probably going to continue with any card that's nine or above, I would believe. Would probably be my continuing range. And he gives up there. 
We open A7 suited here, and this was actually one of the things that we were struggling with in Neil's game, was that I thought that he was opening under the gun just a little bit too light in the spot. And therein lies the problem here, is that we're probably going to be played back against quite a bit. What actually ends up happening is he raises us in position on King 5-5, five five, and that's such a strange board texture that I would be really tempted to be 3-betting if I was in Neil's shoes there. <laughs> 